Yo, Easy. What's up, guys? My name is Evan Duvall. This is Easy Does It. Thank you for joining us. What's up, guys? My name is Evan Duvall. This is episode three of Easy Does It. I'd like to welcome my guest today, Kate Asseltine. Uh, she's a good friend of mine, um, beautiful person, and a, a light in this world. And I really want to get into, um, you know, how we met and uh, tell her story. So we'll let her start off by introducing herself, and um, you know, we'll get into how we got here. Yeah. Um- funny talking about Austin though, just in general, like my idea before I got here was that it was all tumbleweeds. Like, yeah. I thought it was like cowboys and tumbleweeds and yeah. stuff. And now I'm like in a van yeah. doing like doing this awesome thing with all this art. Like yeah. it's unreal. No doubt. That's the, all, that's always a misconception I got, especially when I was in the Navy of, you know, people that grew up watching Westerns and they're like, Oh, do you ride a, a, ho- a yeah. horse to school? You know, I'm like sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like what I learned that was interesting about that was most of those Western sets were like California, Utah, New yeah. Mexico. And so it was like a total misconception of what it looks like here. It's true. You know? I feel like I've been lied to, yeah. but this is better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the closest desert we got is like West Texas, but, yeah, yeah, I went to Big fun. Bend. I yeah. went to Big Bend last March and it was insane because it's not just, it turns into a desert, but then there's mountains. Yeah. And then the Rio Grande's right there. So yeah. like you have an like, amazing amount of water too. It's It was pretty unreal and it's seven hour drive. Yeah. yeah. So, Texas so is huge. Quite the difference when you get to Austin, Texas and you experience the green belt and yeah. how green and lush this area is. Well, right? it, it reminds me of home, mm. you know, and I'm from... Um, it's actually not a city. Mm-hmm. It's a village because oh, wow. it's under 2,000 people. It's wow. called Goodrich. Yeah, Goodrich, Michigan. And so our closest city is Flint. Okay. Um, and so like growing up in Flint, it's like the crime, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of unsafe. And especially yeah. if you're young, like my parents were pretty strict and weren't allowed to like go to the mall by yourself or you mm-hmm. can't really go to the movies. Like it's, you know, it's just not really that safe. And yeah. Um, then like the water crisis and all that. It's like, man, you know, yeah. but, but Flint, you know, in the 60s, 70s, like next level, yeah. you know, is like super prosperous. So it's, it's it sad to, to live. Yeah. It was a place to be, but like to live where it's urban decay mm-hmm. in Detroit as well, like yeah. to, to live in that it's difficult because mm-hmm. I never really had a city life. I didn't really know much about like going out on a, you know, mm-hmm. night on the town and stuff because that didn't really exist. It was a much slower pace. Yeah. And so like, instead of that, I took the route of fitness and yeah. that would be what I would do. Like that would be the night, you know, that's like that's your Friday route. night plan. I yeah. like that route. For real. Yeah. I mean, I think it's important that you find um, healthy kind of alternatives and environments like that. You know, it's, it's no lie that, you know, a lot of these towns where, there was less to do, you know, a lot of people turn to alcohol and drugs yeah. and, you know, those are still a part of our lives, but it's not something that we look at as if like, that's what we're going to do with our day. Right. We have the habits that we turn to, um, the rituals, the routines, and hopefully the community, you know, so, um, we can get into that, you know, um, what did that that fitness journey look like? I always like to know. I think that tells a lot about a person. Yeah. Um, it's not something that we've necessarily touched on before, um, even yeah. though we've interacted in a lot of um, in a lot of ways where we're, we're working out or whatever. But I like to get the story of why. Yeah. And usually everybody has one. Yeah, mine's so. probably I don't know. It's sort of out there. So my brother loved. Arnold movies Mm. like and you know growing up in the 90s it's like not only his action movies but then he was doing family movies Arnold was in kindergarten cop you know he's in jingle all the way like (laughs) he's in all these jams and uh kindergarten cop so my my brother was really into Arnold and you know obviously we ended up watching pumping iron at a young age but in listening to him talk about mindset Mm -hmm. you know was unreal like because he's just 
literally telling you like you could do anything with your mm. body and you know i'm like I don't know, 11, 12, like, yeah, that's, that's you know, young. 13, 14. And then yeah. through, through that, those early, like right as you're coming into being a teenager and hearing that, and it's just so inspiring. And I always felt like when my brother and I would watch those movies and listen to that and you could see like what he built, I was like, yeah, I can yeah. Do yes, anything. And so uh, my brother joined the powerlifting team at our high school. And since so he was sitting a little school, bit older, yeah, he's a year and a half older, okay. right? like my best friend. Mm -hmm. And, um, so he joined and he was staying after school. So I was like, well, shoot, I'll just stay after school too. Like I'm like yeah, as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was 15 when I started. Yeah, same. And man, from the second I started, and I remember like being sore the next day. Yeah. And there's like this sense of pride almost. Yeah. Like, yeah I'm yeah. sore. Like yeah. you're a kid and you're yeah. like pushing it. Nobody's pushing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, it was it was actually really cool. And then being able to quantify it, because I wasn't good at sports. Mm -hmm. Here's the other thing. Kind yeah. of embarrassing. All right. I tried no, all the sports. Always. It wasn't that great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like uh, volleyball. I did track. Yeah. Um, basketball. The coordination the, thing. I was on the B team. Yeah. Me too. Were you? B team was, was always way more fun though. I mean, B team was kind of scary because like if an all-star <laughs> got tired, got tuckered out, they'd be calling your ass up. I'm, like, oh, fuck, I'm not ready. No, we didn't have any all-stars on my B team. Oh. Um, we were all just like average Joes <laughs> and that allowed us to have more fun at practice because the A team Word. was always taking shit way too serious. That's why they were good. Um, but we could have been insecure about that, but no, we just <laughs> make fun of them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so like, yeah, I can't make a free throw, but, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, a funny story I'd actually like to get into. Um, so on a few different instances, like, Usually B team practice just ended up with most of the team um, laughing in, in tears and <laughs> the coach being really mad at me for whatever reason. Uh, I remember in seventh grade, I was on the B team and I had this coach named Coach Buas. And, uh, Shout out Coach yeah, Buas. Yeah, Coach Buas. <laughs> and uh, one time I didn't box out for a rebound and made me run a lap and uh, told me to keep running until he stopped me. But then he forgot about me and I just ran around the court for like an hour and I was so pissed, but I was like too prideful to like say like, Hey coach, like, am I done yet? <laughs> so I just kept running and like cursing his name. Dude. And, uh, and then he was like, Oh shit. And like came back out and got me and I, I was pissed. Yeah, but but that like, was such a, yeah. a reflection of our relationship as player and coach. But, um, he was, he was kind of a hothead and, um, we uh we had a practice one time where uh we were we were running down the court and um one of our guys accidentally like kicked the ball and uh another guy started reenacting him kicking the ball and he kicked the ball and then went straight up and busted the light and the light like shattered all over the floor is this and our game? coach this is in practice oh okay and uh our coach was pissed and apparently the A team was having a huddle during all this and they turned around and watched us like bust this light out and everybody's laughing and apparently someone in that huddle goes and that's why they're on b team <laughs> but Dang. i heard that from one of my friends on a team that wanted to be on b team because Ooh. we had way more fun yeah he was just athletic yeah <laughs> <laughs> he was just good good yeah <laughs> can't really request to be on b team no no but, uh, it takes a special person though yeah. we hold it down on the yeah. b team is what no. I'm saying. i knew that's why we were friends yeah we're, we're both on the b team <laughs> no doubt. in sports but no doubt. individual sports like outside no. of team like yeah. powerlifting was like no 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 like this is on you yeah like kate picks up the weight or she doesn't pick mm. up the weight yeah it was simple it's super Subjective. simple and it's so black and white and you can incrementally get better every week see your progress you can yeah. literally see it on a chart and i you know as a young person like being able to be like this week i lifted this much yeah week four kate lifted this much like you yeah. can see it and like as a kid i was like i can do anything yeah, yeah like yeah. and i that's competed awesome. for the first time i think i was 16 mm -hmm. i com competed at states and um i won yeah i won and i pulled like 310 deadlift. yeah that's that was sick. like 148 yeah well, and that's, I mean, one, that's incredibly impressive, but two, for, to learn at such an early age, um, how to manage and track your progress and know yeah. that you're moving forward in life. And obviously years later, you're still doing that. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's important for, 
for all of us to have some way of doing that, you know, whether it's in the gym or on a spreadsheet, you yeah. know, like just track your progress, make sure that you're moving forward. And, and years later, you'll, you'll look back and be proud of how far you've come. You know, um, the fact that you started at 15, you know, resonates with me a lot, you know, as when I got started in my journey as well. And, you know, that early in life, like, I think we um, were looking for outlets for yeah. energy and pent up um, whatever's going on in your life. Um, and we need a release, right? And um, we're not always able to recognize that at that age because yeah. of our, you know, emotional awareness um, quite hasn't developed. So we know that we need an outlet, um, but we're not quite aware of what that you know entails so mm -hmm. to be able to find that and make sure that it's a healthy habit right has taught me a lot um when i was 14 going on 15 you know i was i was already doing drugs and and drinking and i actually ended up getting arrested um for throwing a party in an abandoned house and uh yeah i got i got caught up in that um i was just kind of hanging out with a bad crowd and um so I got six months probation where I could go to school and home. And I had to be home by seven o'clock mm -hmm. unless I was on school property. And uh, so and I was getting random drug tests. Uh, my probation officer would come check up on me. And uh, so I ended up getting P90X. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, and I was just like, <laughs> dude, I'm going to go for the Olympic version. I'm going to do like two workouts a day. It's no joke. No. And that I'd, I'd get up at 4 a.m. And I had like a set of like uh, rackable dumbbells and like all the equipment necessary, yeah. which wasn't much. Mm -hmm. And I'd knock it out in my room at like 4 to 5 a.m. and then hit a run. And I was 15 years old and I fell in love with it. And that was where that whole journey started, you know, because I realized that like this is a better use of my energy. Um, and I got more out of it than just chasing a high. You know, and to yeah. for me to recognize that was like a reset. Did it give you a high though? Like it, it gave did you, a new like one. Now it was a better one. Yeah, it was endorphins working, right? and yeah, yeah and I felt like I was like are working as yeah, a young man. Yeah, and I had That's the great. I had the awareness to know that I fucked up and needed to change. Yeah. You know, so uh, fitness gave me that, and so I started eating PB and J's, and I'd wake up at three a.m. and eat a chicken breast and have like a twelve hundred calorie shake, which yeah. was fucked because <laughs> I ordered five pounds of this uh, weight gain. Um, oh, stuff protein nasty. yes nasty and i ordered vanilla so i could switch it up throw some bananas in there make some smoothies no nah, they fucked up mm -mm. the order they sent me five pounds of strawberry weight gainer protein and it was so bad it was so thick and the flavor got so old and five pounds lasts a while um but i was putting in the work and honestly i put on like 30 pounds of muscle in like three to four months um, yeah, I guess I, I hit my growth spurt and was working out at the same time. Mm. And, uh, so that was actually, um, the beginning of that. You yeah. Know, I can't necessarily do that anymore. Um, but not with that attitude, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it was a very necessary change in my life and yeah. I'm glad I, I put some things in perspective. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I want to get into how we met. <laughs> um, it's, it's an interesting story. So Kate is, um, an artist. I've, I've shared a lot of her work, um, where y'all have probably seen the mushroom art that I've shared on my page and, uh, collaborated with her, um, on multiple instances. And, um, I've always had an eye for her work, which I happened to come across on social media, um, maybe three, four years ago while I was in the Navy, I don't know if I was home on leave um, or where I saw her art, which was originally an acrylic uh, where you're doing those resin pours. Mm -hmm. And I'll let her get into that style and everything. But I, I saw it on Instagram, it caught my eye. I followed her page. And about two or three years ago, when I was home on leave, I reached out to her and was like, hey, I'm trying to get a painting. Um, could we meet? And we never ended up crossing paths and meeting and making that work. Well, six months ago when I got home and out of the military, um, I hadn't been home for more than a few weeks at that point. And um, I got invited to um, now a friend of ours house 
um, they were having yoga on a Sunday morning and it was this expansive network of, of people in health and wellness and art, just amazing backgrounds. And I ended up getting invited to that and I didn't really know more than a handful of people there. And I was setting up my yoga mat and unrolling my towel. And I looked up and Kate turned around and she's like, Hey, you're the dude. You're the <laughs> and I was like, yo, you're the chick. Whoa. And uh, <laughs> uh, it was like two worlds collided. You know, yeah. it was like, all right, we've been following each other on social media for like three years. And I knew of your art and who you were. And then here we are like face to face. It was like, and just immediately I was like, she is such a dope soul. And like, we're going to be friends for yeah. a long fucking time. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, just what was your perspective in that moment? Like, I know it's just alignment. And- you know, the craziest part mm-hmm. about that story is, yeah, we'd already like kind of crossed paths, but never really met, yeah. never talked on the phone, never saw mm-hmm. each other, didn't really like know anything about you. But um, the day before the yoga event, no, I'm sorry, mm. it was like Friday. Yeah. I was doing my first, I've never taken my mushroom art anywhere. Like yeah. I never showed it to anybody, just kind of like maybe text it to some friends. I'd never even taken it anywhere. My friend Zach, our friend Zach, yeah. um, joined the round. Yeah. He was having yeah. his yoga in the park and he was like, well, I'm going to do art in the park. And yeah. he also loves mushroom art. And he hit mm-hmm. me up. He's like, hey, he's like, you should come like bring a table, bring some of your prints and like yeah. come to this thing. And I was so scared. And yeah. I had, I, you know, I've been here for a handful of years and I just don't have a community yet. And so I'm like, but this is like, I felt like the universe was asking me to go and be there. And so mm-hmm. like, I put a post on my Instagram, like the join the round event, like I'll be having my art here. You saw the post, yep. Yep. you messaged me and you're yep. like, Hey, I'm doing fitness events. Mm-hmm. Would you be down this Saturday? Would you be yeah. like a day from now? Yeah, it was to do last it at mine, minute, and I was like, super last "Bro, minute. I was like, yes, but I need like a week." So that's yeah. when we were like, "Okay, let's t- let's touch base on Monday, whatever." Like, we'll we'll talk on Monday, but let's plan on next Saturday. Like, yeah. I'll be there for you. Okay, cool. So we have that conversation, and then Sunday, yeah, I'm yeah. rolling out my mat. I only know one person there, yeah, I'm Queen Layla, yeah, and she took me there. Like, I mean, it's it's near where I live, so I was like, "Okay, cool," because I'm a hermit. So I was like, "All right, it's not far away." It'll be cool. Even though I don't know anybody, like, it's going to be cool. It felt easy. Yeah, it yeah. felt easy. And I, I remember, like, rolling out my mat, turning around, and it's like, boom, you're right there. Yeah. It, I was like, yo. Yeah. Like, Two you're the dude. Collide. But, yeah, we were <laughs> just talking. And yeah. after all those years, and then, like, we just started talking, and then you showed up at the place I was at. I was like, what in the world? Yeah. It was, we literally uh, just talked. It was odd, uh, to say the least. But, and, you know, I think it wasn't the beginning. It wasn't the first time that I had felt that. And that's why there was a sense of alignment there. Right. Yeah. And that's how all of this has been since like, you're not sitting there today because we decided to be a hermit or, yeah. you know, uh, stick to our own vices or yeah. the things we know. Right. And so that story continues to expand and tell itself. And we're living out the benefits of learning to listen to that voice. Mm. Right. I speak about it on an intuitive level, um, it's not an easy thing to do, yeah. right? Is listen to your heart, listen to your intuition, um, because you do have to take a step outside of yourself mm-hmm. and have that confidence, especially to show up to a community where you only know one person. Yeah. But if we can lean into that, right, then we do give ourselves that opportunity to expand. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it was just, it was just a check. It was a checkpoint of, okay, I'm on my path. Yeah. Um, you know, we're exactly where we're meant to be. So what's next, right? And we've continued to do that. So, you know, right after we met, um, yeah, we did, did yeah, we did the event that next Saturday. And um, yeah, I mean, I was throwing these events together, super last minute. It was all new to me. Um, but, you know, what we were doing and we touched on it in episode one was having workouts out at the park where artists were painting on canvases and we had a live DJ and it was this full, you know, collaborative experience um, of what I identified at that point of like essential parts of our culture here Mm -hmm. in Austin and that was health and wellness, music and art. And that's given me so much my entire life. Um, So it was fun to include all that in one event. And um, so Kate, you know, just like I felt, felt aligned in that sense and showed up. And that's why I know she's a homie Yo. because those people do continue to listen to that, 
and they will lean in and be there for you instead of always just letting, you know, expectations or what you should do get in the way. Um, Because if you're tentative in any sense, then you won't necessarily take those chances and meet those people and have those experiences. Um, So she came to my last event, right? It was your last event? I think it was my last event and it was the most popular and it was really fun. Um, And so my friend David Trapp from episode one was DJing. Yeah. Um, Kate came out with a canvas. I've never even live painted before. That was my yeah. first time. And you were just, you just trusted the process. Oh, yeah. And you're like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And we knew it wasn't going to be easy. Yeah. Um, but we had each other's backs already and just like figuring it out. Totally. You know? And um, so I'm setting up at the park. And uh, it's kind of a great day. Uh, not really show. No, we're not. We didn't really know how many people were going to show up. I had a feeling it could be a pretty popping day. Um, so somehow we got the great idea to eat some mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and Kate's mushrooms were magical that day. Um, and so me, David, and Kate, all central parts of this event. Yes. Eight mushrooms together, and it was the wildest Yo, experience. I felt like we were maestros, like at the the front of this like ballroom, and we were just like orchestrating the people, like with our energy, like what we were doing. Yeah, so we got the music. Yeah, we got me on the you know painting, and then we got you on the turntables. Fucking, is there snare in my headphones? <laughs> <laughs> like on the headset. Yeah, I was it. on a I was on a microphone for an hour, leading people through this workout. And so my workouts were a meditation, which I called mm-hmm. mindfulness, um, to ease into it. Um, and then we went into mobility, and then we'd do a strength workout, and then I'd wind it back down and cool everybody back down. And um, yeah, when I say I was in over my head in the mushroom <laughs> department, to be on a microphone in front of like 70 you people. You crushed it though. And it was so funny because I honestly... I. I kept looking to y'all for comfort, but it only (laughs) made me more uneasy because y'all had y'all's crafts to put your attention and Mm. energy into, Yeah, um, (laughs) which was like, if shit got heavy for you, you could go into the painting and be like, all right, just live here for a moment, you know? And same with David, like he's DJing, like shit got heavy that day. He could just like go to the laptop and act like he's busy. You know, me, I was facing a crowd of like 70 people that were all looking to me for the next move. And I couldn't misspeak because I was mic'd up. I was trying to watch my mouth and not curse. (laughs) And then most of all, like I was getting pretty heavy visuals. And so as I was leading people through this class and a visual would come up and try and steal my attention, I was in my head like, dude, you don't have time for that right now. Right. Like you got to segment this out and stay focused. So Mm. it was such a fine line of um, like being on point and just going with the flow and then being on the verge of like seriously fucking this thing up, and (laughs) which was like pretty intense. You got flirt with it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. it was was completely necessary because I learned in that moment like what kind of flow state I should be instructing from. Um, And that was a really important experience for me. Mm. Um, And also like I had a bunch of friends from high school that came (laughs) out and they're all cracking jokes in the back row. I think probably some of them had beers, you know, (laughs) and like, yeah, they're hilarious, you know, and I wanted to laugh at every joke they said, but nobody wants to listen to a a coach laugh on a microphone (laughs) for an hour. So, uh, yeah, it was such an interesting day, but, um, yeah. So Kate did one of her mushroom pieces, um, for us that day. And then we were actually able to, uh, auction that off Mm -hmm. by the end of the event for someone to take home with them um who our friend sean got and put up in his apartment and we did uh, the install together yeah i'd like to touch on that actually that was such a great moment wow yeah so um i wanted to so she did this portal type piece and um i'll have to post it again but um i wanted her to place the piece in his apartment Mm. and kind of come full circle with an artist's eye of not only making the piece, but then getting to choose its final resting place Mm. in his apartment. And I made those the terms before Sean took home the piece. 
that Kate would get to pick where it went in his apartment. And that, that was so fun. That was so much fun. Yeah. And um, I've actually, that's how I prefer if I'm going to make someone art. Yeah. Before I even make them art, I'll say, can you like take a picture or a video of the space you're thinking about putting the art? Because then mm. we can talk about like, what should the art be? Right. You know, right. if you have an idea of the space, that's all yeah. that matters. But doing it in this way was really cool because it was like, okay, now we have the art, but the other thing about Sean we didn't mention is he has dope art already. Oh yeah. Homie yeah. like has a great eye for like pop art. Yeah. Which I think is awesome. And they're oversized canvases. It's yeah. it's kind of pimping. And then yours fit perfectly. It did. It, was it, like it another, ended up, yeah. And so when I got like, there and I got yeah. to see my piece in his collection, I was yeah. like, wow, this oh, it's is perfect. great. Yeah. And um, and he's got such a he's got those tall ceilings too, so it's gallery like in yeah. there. So it was such a pleasure to be able to go over there and be yeah. like, okay, like let's map it out here. That was really cool. And yeah. and in episode two, I I uh, talked about with uh Louise and Angulo. Um, was that creative process for an artist, right? And really understanding what it's like for an artist to be able to express themselves and have that freedom um, where the customer and the consumer isn't dictating just how these artists do their craft, yeah. right? So it can be collaborative, but leaving room for someone to express themselves in that way is amazing for that the, the individual, the artist. Um, to feel like they have control over that entire process. Totally. You know? I, I love the idea of co-creation mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's nice if the only thing I can, if the only thing I feel I need in order to like execute to my personal level of excellence for somebody mm -hmm. is them to tell me the vibe they're going for. Right. I know that sounds super simple, but that's it. Like, okay, this is the room. What's yeah. this room used for? Okay. That's the energy. That's the vibe. That's what you use it for. Okay, cool. I'll come back. Don't totally. worry, I got you. Trust yeah. me, trust yeah. me. Because that's sort of, I feel like, kind of a thing I've been trying to channel. Like, I don't know if, if describing it like a, as a gift, it's not necessarily a gift. It's just so, sort of just like really getting in there. Like what what is it that you want to feel? Mm. And when you ask somebody that, it's honestly, it's hard for people to answer it for the most yeah, part. That's, it's in yeah. especially true with people's homes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's weird. How do they want to feel? How they want to feel yeah. in this room? Yeah. And it seems like it's a question that a lot of people don't even know how to answer. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. But this is like, you know, this might be where you sleep. Mm. This might be, this might be your bathroom. This where you, this is the first thing you do. You, you walk in, you look at yourself in the mirror in this room. Yep. Yeah. Like, how do you want to feel when you look at yourself in the mirror? Right. Okay. Yeah. Like, what's the lighting? What's, yeah. What, what, what is what's that? What's the mood? And that's, that's the important part of, of all of this that we've been talking about is, is creating space and owning your space and controlling what that looks like, what allows you the most freedom, Yeah. right? And it's very real that in this world, people are going to be a part of that space, right? So if you have, you know, this perfect setup and you never share it or you get freaked out every time someone steps inside of it, like, is that really ideal for this world, you know? Um, and anyway, I think it's interesting um, when we're able to create spaces that we feel called towards where we all align, yeah. right? If we can all have that mutual feeling, um, like those those Sunday yogas um, or these workout classes or whatever events that we feel called towards, um, it's interesting that people can get together and still flourish and be comfortable. And I think that's really important for us to um you know play a part in yeah but i think what's interesting about you kate specifically is that you know a lot of these people you know with louise that i just had on and the next few episodes a lot of them are professional artists and that is their line of work um and what i love about you is that you allow it to be an outlet for creativity much like you found through fitness originally, but it's a different state, right? A physical state is more, um, you know, reaching through the physical tactile world. And then art is, I, you know, what I've gotten from it is, is flow and then, you know, playing or dancing with resistance, mm. you know, and it's like that fine line that I was, I was working through in that fitness class uh, where I was mic'd up and, you know, on one side, um, you know, I can, I can be on point. I can feel aligned on another, I could err. And, um, 
you know, I think that's an important line for us to find daily. I've tried painting myself. Uh, you have you a were, lot of areas. Oh, about it's this? so hard for me. Painting? So hard. What did you try to paint? Um, all right, so I love the movie Into the Wild. Ooh. And for a while, like my first brand and my first logo and a lot of things were um based on the magic school bus and into the wild i love the book i love the movie and so i wanted to paint that scene where the school bus is you know in the alaskan mountain range and i sat down with a canvas and i penciled it out first and i thought it'd be a good form of like meditation for me yeah. because i'm just so like i just want to do stuff and <laughs> throw weight around and not, you know, like not sit. And like, I mean, I, I have multiple forms of meditation. Yeah. Um, you know, one of them is running, I have a practice of seated meditation, I do breath work, but I wanted something more creative where I'd have a finished product. And I thought painting might be a good one where I could yeah, look, yeah. At, look back at that piece and remember what state I was in when I made it but I could not get my hand to work with a paintbrush. Still can't. I couldn't match lines. I can draw pretty good. Yeah. I can shade. I can do things with a pencil and finer lines. Yeah. But painting was so hard for me. Painting's hard for me yeah, too. No to, doubt. Be, to be totally honest. That's why I have so much respect for I've never artists. been a painter. I've yeah. always been a drawer though. Yeah. Since I could pick up a pencil, yeah. I have always drawn. Yeah. And I learned how to draw by drawing Arnold. Yeah. My mom will tell yeah. you the story. That's like it. I would take the cover of yeah. T2, Tremere 2, yeah. Judgment Day, bro. Can we bring oh, one of those day. back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I have them. So I've been keeping them like on, you know, computer paper. So it's like nine by 10 or That's whatever. Cool. I have binders of these sketches and I was That's really so into sick. comics. So I would do like Spider-Man and mm -hmm. I would always focus on faces and try to draw, train myself on the hardest things. Yeah. Like ears, hands, and eyes. Okay. Because I feel like if you can get those most challenging aspects down, you could do the rest. The rest is just, you just fill in. Right. But those are like key elements, lips and mouth too. But mm. um, I actually never told you this, but I w originally wanted to be an artist. Yeah. Uh, originally, that's what I wanted to do for money. And mm -hmm. I got a scholarship, um, but it still wasn't going to cover like the yeah. cost yeah. to go to the other side of the state. Mm -hmm. And I knew I would be in a lot of debt, which is unfortunate yeah. too. And then there's that, pressure from your parents it's like okay so how are you going to take care of yourself yeah an artist. you want to be an artist yeah you want to be oh so you're going to be a cartoonist kate because that's yeah. what i wanted i wanted to illustrate and yeah I still kind of do like okay, yeah. if there's there's and i want to just put this out in the universe like yeah. i want to do a coloring book or like some kind of children's like illustrate or even write too i mean that would be great but yeah well i think there's all these all those judgments that are just like generationally passed down like that's such a 1950s and before way of thinking of expression we've come a long way since the 60s and 70s for people to accept that but you know people will still think that way oh you want to be a creative you want to be an artist right. you want to write but here you in know? austin that's the yeah. norm it's like yeah how are you because generationally cre creativity has been passed yes. down yes open-mindedness has been yeah. passed down that's astounding like, I, Right. I think there's a baseline of wisdom that we have ornately, but other than that, we're influenced by the world that we're brought up in. Right. And so even though we grow up in small towns, we have certain perspectives or opinions because of the way we we're raised or our parents or siblings. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right way. Right. right. So if we can identify those ways of thinking and just let them, you know, be and not judge. Um, and it's a lot better world. And I think Austin, Texas gets that. It and does. Yeah. I was you raised, feel it. I was raised that way by my parents, you know, like they, they pointed at the things in Austin, Texas that I love now and stand for now. And I'm trying to bring back in the community. They were going, Hey, you should appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And thankfully I had my parents to do that. That's amazing. Right. But a lot of people, and thank you to yeah. my mom and Much dad. Much love, mom and yeah, pop, for real. Like, yeah, no, I, I love that about the way I was wow. raised here uh, in that environment. Um, but not necessarily everybody has that. Um, or, you know, do they care? Well, I think we have more than average that care here, you know, and that's what kind of creates that identity of 
a city full of people that are you know friendly to one another and can work with one another and willing to collaborate and um that's what's inspiring about this yeah. place you know it's a melting pot of creators mm -hmm. because right now it's beautiful because you're getting like a casket you're you're getting a huge influence of like young hungry entrepreneurs but then you're getting these people who maybe like grew up on a farm or kind of yeah. grew up on the outskirts in the country and they're more blue collar and, th and then you get people that are super creative like yeah. insane imaginative like innovation and people doing exciting stuff that yeah. they're like happy about which is yeah. where i'm from it's kind of like you're you're raised to be like okay how are you gonna pay like you, the job that you get mm -hmm. it's to pay your bills right it's not we're not asking ourselves what would you like to do for a living yeah no one yeah. asks you that no, it's like how can you education can system doesn't you know Sad. Let us express ourselves that way. Most people's parents kind of put onto them, you know, what they should be thinking or a lot, and which is partially their job. There's nothing wrong with For that. For sure. And uh, I yeah. appreciate, yeah, I definitely yeah. do, but I see it. And when you come here, it's like, right. none of that matters. Not anymore. And, yeah. and, and people can take a deep breath and be themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's been the case here for a long time. You know, what I said in episode one, and I'll continue to reiterate was, you know, Texas was very conservative back in the day. Austin became a more liberal place, a more free thinking place. And that's what's allowed um, the culture here to flourish was always that. Um, and so it's important that, you know, with this city, we maintain that because yeah. what makes Austin, Texas is that it's raw and real and rugged in that sense. Um, it's not just all, you know, um, looking a certain way right for me it's like being home like mm. it's like i'm just gonna wake up put my crocs on <laughs> walk out in my pajamas like yeah. to go get coffee it's like you know, yeah, <laughs> Yo, i feel sure. like i'm i feel like i'm in flint <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. it's kind of cool but like no one's just like there's it's fine like everybody's cool it's like yeah. everyone's your neighbor mm. it's yeah. kind of what it feels like in I want that to stay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, it feels like people that come here embrace that, which I think is a beautiful thing. At least the people that I've met, and I've only no, recently so too. started yeah. opening myself up so to I think they're, they're ready for it, and yeah. it's positive. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you move somewhere and you don't have something positive, um, the narrative isn't positive, then we have a tendency to express ourselves in, in a defensive kind of manner yeah. of, you know, not completely opening up because you feel like something or um isn't in alignment and that's not how people feel and me being from here i'm able to recognize that and then people moving here they're able to recognize that and so therefore no matter where we come from we're both seeing and recognizing the same thing yeah which means that we have more in common than we originally thought mm -hmm. so we should lean into that Totally. You know, it's hard to lean into stuff, though. It is. It <laughs> it's is. hard. Even when it's like the same wavelength, it's like, oh. That's resistance. the battle. That's the battle we'll continue to play, you know. It's, yeah. That's never something that we win. Yeah. Um, so we'll continue to, to walk that walk and dance that dance. Um, but, yeah, so I guess get into, like, what, what changed from wanting to be an artist and then now – get into you know like what do you do now yeah i'd like to get into that because i feel like you, it's a similar story to a lot of people. totally yeah. yeah and like i said i've always i always had a passion to to do art and mm -hmm. it always has maintained something like a cycle for me where i love to draw and then it i sort of i don't know i'm kind of like competitive nature all yeah. right and so it's like once i feel like i've gained mastery mm. now i must move on to like <laughs> the next belt like yeah, I, that's the warrior you know what i mean the, sure. it, it's, yeah it's almost it's like i'm putting myself through this thing and so at this point it's turned into this this thing where if i see something that i'm attracted to like mm -hmm. i see like a type of art form mm -hmm. and i'm like whoa if it makes me feel a certain type of way i will youtube that shit and figure yeah. out how to do it yeah and that's how i fell into the flow art mm -hmm. that resin pour yeah i saw some australian artists i was following on instagram and they were doing videos like yeah. um kind of like tutorials yeah and i started researching i'm like okay because this is no fucking joke yo you can have a butane torch yeah i'm out here at home depot getting Chemical supply yeah i'm shit. fucking gotta wear a mask like mask up yeah pre-covid mask up like yeah. for days you know I'm triggered for sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> but so getting into the resin though like for me 
I was getting out of a relationship at that time. And mm. I'd been seeing that art form and I had been, you know, on this path of like mindset books and like mm. listening to things that were like empowering and like courage and encourages this middle ground between like fear and love courage is in the middle. And like that courage point takes you from like pride and guilt and shame. And it puts you over the edge into belief mm -hmm. and faith. And then you can, you can slowly work your way up to more of like a mindful, more of like a Zen type, right. you know, state, but of, of enlightenment. That. But anyway, so I had been hearing this stuff about like, do something that requires courage. And I'm like, mm. I should try a new form of art. Mm. And I'd been seeing that art. And I'm like, I'm so moved by it. Fuck it. I'm just gonna, I don't even know. I might fail. I don't know. Let's just try it. And yeah. I, Trust me, I spent a lot of money yeah, on resin that just because there's a lot of trial and error yeah. trying to figure it out. But once I got it, so I'm it, with it. Here's here's the other thing that that made it so strong for me is never really worked with painting, always was a drawer. But I always like to draw things that nobody wanted mm. in their house. Mm -hmm. Started doing resin and people were them. dude. That's what caught my eye. Was it that changed resin piece, it yeah. like it it ripped my heart open because mm -hmm. people were like. I need that above my bed. How much yeah. do you want for it? And I was like, whoa. Yeah. I've been drawing literally my entire life. You know, I think I'm 27 at the time I started doing resins. It was like three or four years ago. Yeah. And people were coming at me. You were one of them because mm -hmm. you saw the poor and you were like, yeah. yo, bro, this is sick. I'm like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, it was, sick. It's so fun. It was because, I, and I could probably, you know, say that the reason I was attracted to your art was because at that point in my life, I had identified what flow was, mm. um, but, and I'd want that in my space or my house because that style of art requires so much flow and just enough letting go, you know, for yes. the piece to turn into what it does. Mm. And that's okay. You don't, with the resin pours that you were doing where, you know, it's a liquid and you're letting it sit and go out as it will you know that yeah. for an artist to be in a state where wherever it falls and letting that be okay mm -hmm. is amazing there's nothing mm -hmm. like it yeah, and you're the way you described it is so beautiful it's literally like the words of my heart it's true like well, and it's not even the flow it's the colors as well yeah that's no the, and it's the how colors expression. blend you know mm -hmm. what i mean and that's a whole nother ball game of therapy but yeah. it's therapeutic to let go absolutely and with the flow art you have to you can't control yeah, I it i think i think that's so interesting that you know you were going through those changes through your relationship and needed something to literally pour your heart into yeah and you found that form of art um of letting go and flow at just the right time and often when you're doing what you were intended to do at the right place at the right time yeah, people are going to notice because it's genuine yeah. and authentic and it feels real, yeah. right? And I recognize that in you, still in your art. And what I think is so beautiful about the way you do your art now is that, like I said in the beginning, you're not a professional artist, but I think that it almost gives you more freedom. And we've talked about mm. this before <laughs> and letting it be a creative outlet yeah where you don't feel the pressure like you have to have a product yeah. um, because that resistance in itself is tough for artists to feel like they're performing in art, yeah. which is really tough. And so, you know, with you I've, and what I've seen in our friendship so far is that, you know, and I want to touch on um, Kate's been, well, set out to do 50 paintings 50 days in a row, one painting a day, right? Well, it's 100 hours of painting. Oh, 100 hours of yep. painting. Yeah, and I'm at okay. like 67. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, Almost and, there. Yeah. yeah. And she's been sharing that journey through her Instagram. Yeah. Um, using these watercolors and the yeah. pieces are incredible. Thank you. And, um, you know, just the discipline it takes to do that in, in that approach. Yeah. And I don't think, from what I can tell, like there's any reason – to do that other than familiarizing yourself with just finding that state daily. Yeah. yeah. Finding it daily, but also again, like for me, I was, when I got into watercolor, it was literally like January, December, just a couple months ago. And yeah. uh, I was going through one of those phases again, where I was feeling kind of blue and mm. feeling kind of not inside yeah. myself. And it, yeah. it felt like the same thing with resin, like this voice in my head that was like, courage mm. 
you got to do something courageous, like do something that you don't believe you are good at. And I, like you were saying, you're not a painter. I've always lied at this. I'm going to call it a lie because it's totally a lie. I always said to myself, you're not good at painting. You suck at painting. Mm -hmm. Don't paint, just draw by hand. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, that's not fucking true. Like, I bet I could figure this shit out. And, you know, you get on Pinterest and you watch enough of those time-lapse videos, fucking Bob Ross for days. But that's what's crazy (laughs) to me about the way that you do art is, you know, what you say is figuring out yeah, and just, like, just doing it. I mean, those pieces to me look perfect. And I bet bet Tyler would attest to that. And, right? And it's like every one you share, like, I know that you're in a state where you're just like wondering, you know, like, I don't know, is is this, uh, is this even good? And like for us, <laughs> like looking at it, it's like, that's so fucking Bro, awesome. sometimes I finish it though. Yeah. Like I'll finish one, I'll let it dry and I'll yeah. come back and I'll sit down and be like, bro, that's so good. Like yeah, sometimes yeah, I yeah, surprise yeah. myself with I how it dries that's and what, how it yeah. ends up. But you know what? Like that's what I love about in it. life. I just really believe in um, deliberate practice. And I feel like in life, like if you really want something, um, you can achieve it. Like if Mm -hmm. there's something, if there's a skill or there's something you want to express, you might not believe that you're good at it right now. But I mean, how much have you practiced? You know what I mean? And and for me, I'm like, I believe in 100 hours is an arbitrary number, but it was just something for me to aim at and say, Kate doesn't believe that she's good at watercolor. Kate will now use deliberate practice and change that. Mm -hmm. And I've just been putting in the time. And as the time has gone by and I've been journaling every piece, I've got it all written down. So I know exactly where I'm at. I'll I'll read through sometimes and I'm like, I remember where I was at in that day when I did that one. Yeah. Um, Or I'll remember someone commenting and and, and messaging me privately and being like, that inspired me to pick up the guitar again. Yeah. I look forward to this every day. And I'm like, it's become so much more different than my deliberate practice in this mission to be proficient and achieve my purple belt now and yeah, I yeah. can ascend to the next form of art. But mm-hmm. right. it's becoming more of this like people feel like they can express themselves mm-hmm. when they see it. And I'm like, that's what I love. That's hitting something else. And that's yeah. deeper than this becoming a career for me and me making money. Like right. this is, no, it's, well, this could be a, it's real value. Oh, it's so it's deep. Inspir- inspiring people. Yeah. And like we touched on earlier was action inspires action. Right. Yeah. And by you sharing that journey. And for me, what's inspiring about your art, right. Is that you have your day job, you do yeah. your work, but you've identified that it's important mm-hmm. for you to have this creative outlet yep. to reach a state where you feel the most peace um but there's nothing easy about it and right and to do that daily um is really important for the human mind and psyche right and so many people so let's let's backtrack a little bit right i think a lot of people deny themselves a creative side Mm. because society has done so right which is getting less so yeah um and Austin is a special place where that's not necessarily the truth. Yeah. Um, so once we get past that and we allow ourselves to express ourselves um, in whatever creative you know, uh, pursuit that we choose, that's what's going to flourish. But unfortunately, a lot of people deny themselves that. Yeah. They wish that they could learn the guitar or they wish that they could paint, but they never take the action to do so yeah. because – they're either afraid of failure or they're afraid of what others may think or they're just not creating the space and time, right? Time is probably the most common. Like where would I, you know, have an hour to sit down and paint? Like I'm so busy um, or, you know, I have a family or kids or, you know, a job that's very demanding. Um, so we, we recognize that the ability to pursue creative pursuits is an advantage. Um, It's something that we shouldn't take for granted because we have that time. We have that space. Um, You know, I guess I want to touch on that. You know, how, how have you found and been disciplined in that space? I think it's the same way that I approach fitness, Mm -hmm. you know, where it almost becomes just a part of, your identity in a way where Mm -hmm. it's like breathing, Mm -hmm. you know, where 
it's unnatural if there is not space for it. Yeah, it's all. It's kind of, you know, and, and, and to be able to do that and overcome those excuses, because you're right. I mean, when I think in my head of people who are their immediate thing, sometimes people, this is what's sad, is sometimes when someone sees something really creative or, you know, that time-lapse video of it being created, sometimes their automatic response is, I suck at art. Mm. And that's what they say. And I'm like, oh wow like yeah. that's that's how you feel when you see someone creating and it's like oh that's something that i would want to i just want to like reach deep down in there and pull that out because it's such a such a lie that you tell yourself and a lot of people feel that way when they what see creation think, what do you think the origin of that is do you think that people they've just totally separated themselves from their imagination they have put on this like program where they're like oh, i yeah. only have time today for work and then i'm tired and then i go to bed and I eat and then that's it. And like, they don't even think that this aspect of, of expression, let's just call it mm-hmm. that. Cause it doesn't have to be created. Just expression. Like who are yeah. for five minutes when you wake up in the morning, it's, yeah. expressing your joints, expressing, moving the blood through every area. Like even yeah. that is beautiful and people don't make time for something like that. And it's, it's difficult, but my advice or how, how I approach it, just like the five minutes of hula hooping is literally just that it's five minutes. Mm-hmm. With the painting I'm up to, I just set aside, I always tell myself, just one hour a day. Like yeah. I, I put a block, yep. a block on, on it, just one hour. Yeah. So when I decide to paint, it's always something I know I can do in an hour. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's creating space and time for expression, right? Yeah. That's the word you used. And if, when I hear expression, I hear freedom, Yeah. you know, and letting freedom be okay, right? I'm a very disciplined, structured uh, I run my life by a schedule, but what I've started doing now is scheduling time to do whatever I want. Yeah. Right, so I'll put that on the schedule, where just do what you feel like, or you know whatever you feel called towards. Um, I'll block those out now, yep. just like you do with art. Yep. So, I guess what I'm trying to encourage here is, you know, find what works for you, even if you're not an artist um, or necessarily. Think of yourself as creative. Um, I think it's important to try to do something, try to learn something um, outside of you know what's normal, because yeah. that allows you to expand in so many ways. Just like Kate has done with art, where that intention and focus and learning to flow through resistance and having less boundaries, or you know, with watercolors and acrylics, where there is enough flow and less lines, they're they're all practices and disciplines but that expands outward in the way that you carry yourself in your presence yeah in an emotional and vibrational sense i can feel the the time that you've put into your art because it expands outward Mm. right those those disciplines that you have i think you have identified work for you yeah, they, they fucking work, right? Because of the way that you're able to, to carry yourself and be and flow yeah. and have resistance or feelings, mm-hmm. but not to listen to them. Right. Right. And yeah, that's, have the courage, like to yeah, answer to them. Yeah. Like, like. And so that, I guess that's where I'll wrap up that point is that if you don't consider yourself an artist or a creative, just know that you are because if you start identifying the way that you live, and thinking about it like an art form yeah. and taking down the walls um, you know, of your consciousness and the, the expectations and fear of failure or letting people down, you know, get rid of those things. Slowly start to, to strip away those boundaries and you will start to express yourself self more creatively. And you will attract people that live lo- their life in that sense too, yeah. Um, because they recognize that you've, you've, you're trying to take down those walls. We're not all successful in that, right? But we're trying. Yeah, I think to even simplify it further, though, you just got to get in tune with what brings you joy. Mm. Yeah. Most people aren't in tune with what brings them joy. They're just doing what they feel like they have to do. And I feel like when you find out where the joy is. It becomes so much easier to be like, huh, yeah. that makes me feel great. Yeah. I should do more of that. Yeah. Like if it's pottery or gardening mm-hmm. or 
you know, anything, you know? And yeah, it, it could be anything. Yeah, it could be anything. Trying something new that you've right? never done before could yeah. bring you joy. You know, like I don't, I don't necessarily have, I mean, I, I think I do, but I don't have a few things that I go to that really bring me joy. Really? I have so many oh, and I change yeah. all the time. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll, I'll get like two, three weeks of like hitting it on the head and then I'll be like, oh shit, something's off. But that's where I've recognized that it's time for me to make a change mm. and try something new or remind myself of previous habits or practices that I've gotten away from. One of them being journaling now, yeah. you know? Um, sure. Yeah, I think I, I definitely, that's one I'm pretty hard on myself about. Because You're I, so good at writing I though. love to write <laughs> and I'm always writing on my phone for content, mm -hmm. but just like getting back to handwriting and having a journal, which I've tried to do with my scheduling. I'm trying to get off my phone as much as possible. And which is tough when your line of work is right, social media. I say, and, yeah. But I try to do it creatively, right? Yeah. So that is a creative pursuit for me, mm -hmm. you know, expressing those those um, captions and stuff. That's that's basically what I'd be putting in my journal. For sure. Um, and that's how this all started is I went to the phone instead of the journal. But I'd like to get back to writing because I, th I think there's something beautiful about having something tactile or um, – Something that you could hand down Dude, or it's share. In our DNA, I think. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like I think, myths yeah. and legends and like yeah. tablets and stones. Well, and I started yeah. journaling when I was like seventeen because my goal at seventeen was to fill a journal with enough wisdom what I thought what I could pass dicks. down. <laughs> yeah, right. It's <laughs> seriously, but I could pass down to my kid when they were like seventeen. It was like this like beautiful thing. I yeah. thought in my head. I haven't stuck to it one bit. You know, like but. I'd like to accrue like all the the captions and stuff stuff that I've poured into my phone. Yeah. In like a book or like that just printed, dude, just one copy is not for publish. Let me illustrate it. Yeah, that'd be sick. Like be really you cool. show me the captions and then I'll illustrate the captions. Yeah, I got. I mean, well, that's kind of how we can do what we want. That we do whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do what I want. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's a great you know message to end on is you know if you're not an artist if your day job isn't being an artist just know that you can be yeah. you know and you don't have to be good um but if you put in the time you put in the effort and the work and you'll surprise yourself just express yeah, you know what i mean like it. your your joy you got to find it though that find takes a little bit of work yeah you know be, be honest yeah well, it was really fun just having you on and being able to chop it up a bit. And you know, it's been a fun just, day. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but just talking about, you know, what it's like to, to move to Austin and the culture here. I hope we continue to expand on that because it's an interesting conversation for me to have being from here with all of these people moving. You know, I like to hear what it's like to move here and what you think, because yeah. I, I have more of an idea now that i left for so many years mm. reintegrating i'm like okay like i know i know what you feel yeah you know, a little bit Dude, it's the so, neighborhood yeah it is the is another day yeah. in the neighborhood out here it is I love yeah it we're here. all neighbors and uh friends and, and uh let's continue to have that conversation but um thank you so much for coming on i love you i love you <laughs> and uh it's uh it's been a blast to be your friend so far and to see what we can collaborate on. And so um, today and onward, let's continue yes. to expand on that. Can't wait. Awesome. Thanks, guys. See you next time.